Hi, everyone. Gene here. Before we jump into today's show, just a reminder, you can now access and control the Tapping Q&A podcast on that home speaker device, which is produced by Amazon. And if I said the name of that device right now and you are listening to this on a speaker, it's going to fire that device off. So I'm not going to say its name. If you'd like instructions on how to do that, all you need to do is go to tappingqna.com slash A-L-E-X-A which is the name of that device, which I can't say. Enjoy today's show. This is Gene Monterostelli, and welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast, recorded live to tape from Williamsburg in Brooklyn. This is episode 311, originally aired March 28, 2018. Hi, everyone. I hope this finds you well wherever you are and whatever time of day you're getting a chance to listen to this. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Today, we're going to talk about giving ourselves permission to be angry. And where this came from, as you recall, last week in episode 310, we talked about how you can use tapping and swearing at the exact same time to great effect and how useful and how important that can be as a tool to add to your tool set. Not that I'm saying you should swear all the time, but there are some real benefits that have been scientifically proven that when we're working on emotional stuff, that profanity is a useful tool for tapping into that. So after publishing that episode, I was having a conversation with one of my clients who hadn't gotten around to to listening to the episode, but she was in a situation where she was really frustrated with some things that were going on at work. And so I was sharing with her the research of how valuable it is for us to be able to scream and yell and use profanity to release that anger in a healthy way. And she appreciated that, but then she mentioned the fact that she felt really guilty about being angry. And it wasn't that she was feeling guilty because she had let her anger get the best of her, but the fact that she simply was feeling angry. For those of us who have been doing professional development work and personal development work for a really long time, we know we have really high emotional IQs and we know when our emotions get the best of us. And because of this work that we're consistently doing, we're getting to a place more and more where we are not overcome by these sorts of reactions so that when they are really super strong, we find ourselves in a circumstance where we can feel bad that we are angry. So my client was in a situation where they didn't want to feel the anger at all. But the reality is, anger is a useful, helpful, natural emotion for us to experience. Now, we can express that anger in really unhealthy ways, in really detrimental ways, and we can experience too much anger in an unhealthy way, but there's nothing bad about the emotion itself. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to do some tapping to give ourselves permission to feel anger or whatever emotions that we are embarrassed that we have. Because if we don't give ourselves permission and space to feel those emotions, if they are coming up and we're fighting them back and we're holding them back, we know that there's going to be long-term consequences to that. So what I want you to do is just tap on the side of the hand, take a nice big deep breath. Take another nice big deep breath and move from point to point, repeating after me. I know I have a rich emotional life. And these emotions are useful. My emotions are one way in which my system communicates with me. And because of this, it is useful information. I also recognize the fact that there is a part of me that thinks I'm above it. That believes that I have transformed so much that I should no longer be overcome by these emotions. That I should be able to deal with everything in a reasonable way. And 
the fact that I'm feeling these emotions feels like I have failed. Feels like I have made a mistake. Feels like I haven't evolved as much as I think I have. I give myself permission to know I'm allowed to feel my emotions. I give myself permission to feel the whole spectrum of emotions. I give myself permission to know that emotions are healthy. I give myself permission to know that my emotions are natural. I don't want my emotions to be disproportionate. I don't want to lash out at others with my emotions. But I am allowed to feel them. I am allowed to experience them. It is healthy for me to feel deep emotion. It is not a failing to feel emotion. It is not a shortcoming to feel emotion. Emotions are information. It is unhealthy for me to repress those emotions. I give myself permission to articulate my emotions in a clear, honest, and authentic way. I am healthier when I articulate my emotions. I am happier in the long term when I articulate my emotions. I give myself permission to feel. I give myself permission not to hold back. I give myself permission to grow through my emotional experience. Nice deep breath. Now, there are two really important things I'd like to hit on as we think about that. The first is this idea of permission. And it's so valuable. I don't use that word lightly. I used it a lot today. I use it regularly with my clients. It's so valuable for us to have that permission to be able to do things. And we're no longer fighting some sort of internal battle or rules that we think exist in the world that don't. And in a few weeks, I'm going to share something with you about permission that I think is actually going to help you in a deeper way. The second is if anger in particular is something that you struggle with, I wrote a book based on my time teaching anger management in the county jail. Um, if you go to tappingqa.com slash anger, You can find access to that book. There is a Kindle version. There's a print version. There's even a way that you can download the PDF version of the book for free, tapping qna.com slash anger to check that out. If you enjoyed this today and you know someone in your life who could use it, please share it. The way that podcasts grow and the way that resources like this spread is because of word of mouth. You are more likely to listen to something that a friend has recommended to you than something you just see randomly in your Facebook feed. So if you know someone who could use this or any of our past episodes, please be our ambassador. Pass the show along. You can find our entire archive at tappingqnapodcast.com. There are over 166 hours of free audio content. Interviews, instructions, tap-alongs just like 
like this. You can subscribe to the show in Apple Podcasts, in Spotify, in that unnamed Amazon home speaker device, TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Music Play, anywhere you can find good podcasts, you can find this as well. If you have a question or a comment, you can always reach out, gene, G-E-N-E, at tappingqna.com, or click on that contact link on the website. Um, If you have a question, if you have a guest that you'd like us to interview in the future, please let me know. Some of the best shows and best topics have come from listeners just like you. For the Tapping Q&A podcast, this is Gene Montrostelli. I hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. The Tapping Q&A podcast is copyright Gene Montrostelli, Tapping Q&A 2016. All views expressed by guests are those of the guests and not necessarily of Gene Montrostelli or Tapping Q&A.